Imagine if the French Grand Prix was at Le Mans or the US GP at Daytona road course. Personally, I love Formula One sprint races, but there is also something to be said for a longer full day race with several classes and strategy battles that last hours and not just seconds. There are two main series for endurance racing right now, the World Endurance Championship, WEC, and IMSA. Now, the World Endurance Championship is the one that runs at Le Mans, and IMSA runs at Daytona. The cars are broadly similar, but the official classes are different. But let's stick to the WEC cars to avoid boring you all. They are GTEs for now, LMP2 and Hypercar. And obviously the only ones that would get close to the F1 car on pace are the hypercars. They are 670 horsepower to the rear wheels as well as 268 horsepower going to the front wheels from the hybrid system. And this is kind of similar to F1 in that it can only be used for a set amount throughout the whole lap. Now, whilst the peak horsepower is similar, you F1 nerds will know that F1 cars have way more downforce and weigh about 250 kilos less. So deal done, right? Well, the hypercar has covered wheels and is much more slippery than the draggy F1 car. And at Le Mans and Daytona, you run less wing than even Monza. Both the circuits have very long straights, something that would favor the hypercar. And don't forget, it's not just the Toyota the Formula One cars would have to worry about. As soon as next year, there are going to be a whole host of teams competing in the hypercar class. Peugeot, without a rear wing, apparently they don't need one. Glickenhaus, Bugatti, Porsche, and even Ferrari. What's mad is that Ferrari had some spare cash after the new F1 cost caps, and so they are spending it on the hypercar program. Now I'm all in favor of more of that. Where are you Mercedes and Aston? Imagine the Aston hypercar, that would be absolutely class. Anyway, back on topic. So on pace, which would win? Well, it's tough to tell, but in 2021, Lando got to the highest top speed of 217 miles an hour at Paul Ricard, where Roman Dumas got the highest hypercar top speed in his Glickenhaus at Monza. And well, that was only 197 miles an hour, a fair bit less than the F1 car. And the lower downforce levels, strictly controlled by the hypercar regulations, plus the extra weight would mean that the F1 car would be quicker through the corners and almost certainly have the pace advantage over a single lap. And the setup of the F1 car would need to be pretty weird. For example, the Mousson Strait at Le Mans is a public road most of the time, and so it's pretty bumpy. Oh, and the F1 car would have to stay well away from the curbs. They are pretty nasty at Le Mans. Verstappen learnt that in the virtual Le Mans 24. The closest head-to-head -head example we have is back in the LMP1 era at Silverstone. LMP1s are different cars to the hypercars, but broadly similar. And there, comparing the British Grand Prix and the six hours of Silverstone times, would say the F1 car would pull about 10 seconds per lap. But that is far from the full story. Thank you very much for watching this video, and I'll catch you in the next one.